This is Ferris Wheel, my 150 gram ant weight combat robot that I built in a previous video. Today we're going to take a look at its first two events, and look at how I took it from this complete bundle of chaos to a relatively controlled, much more competitive robot. We left off as I just completed the first build and basic testing of the robot. That left me with a good couple of weeks to practice driving the design, make any small alterations needed, and be ready for a debut at AWS 73. This should have made for a nice relaxed run up to the competition and allow for any bugs to be ironed out well in advance with loads of testing. However, Ox is an event I was already signed up for with my other vertical spinner, Revron. I was a little late to sign up and as a result didn't manage to get a second robot into the competition. The night before, when a second spot did open up, I thought it would be a great idea to take Ferris along and bring its debut forwards. After all, two extra weeks of testing wouldn't make much difference to performance, right? Orcs runs the fight night format of tournament, so Ferris will be guaranteed 5 fights and if it won enough of them it would make it into the single elimination tournament for the finals. As it would turn out, the idea of getting into the finals might have been a bit optimistic. The first 3 fights followed a bit of a theme. There's a lot to get through in this video, so for the sake of brevity, here's some uninterrupted chaos. I think it's safe to say that that didn't go to plan. So what exactly is going wrong? Newton's third law states that every action must have an equal and opposite reaction, and when you try to spin a really heavy disc up really quickly, it tries to spin the robot back the other way. This is what's known as a torque reaction force. This can be seen at a small scale with this little motor. Every time it twitches when it tries to drive forward, that's the motor being forced backwards by the torque reaction. It's this same principle that allows robots like Droopy at the three pound scale to navigate around the box. However, in Ferris's case, it's generally resulting in it face planting and hitting the floor. For the remainder of Orcs, there's not a lot I can do to fix this other than driving the robot much more gently and being much more careful with throttle inputs. So let's see how that went. With those two fights, that brought Ferris's run at Orcs to a close, on a total of 4 losses and 1 win. Much as it spent most of the day bouncing around the box completely uncontrolled, the last two fights showed a glimmer of potential on what it might be able to do with a few changes. So let's get into those. The main cause of the issues is the forks. For starters, they're a little bit too short. So the first thing I did was lengthen these to help counteract the torque reaction force. I next added end stops to the forks to limit their range of travel so they couldn't get stuck under the robot at any point. I also added a hole through the back of the fork and through the chassis that I could put a piece of elastic through to help tension the forks down and keep the tips in contact with the floor. 
For the fork tips, I used a piece of titanium ground level with the floor to help get under robots. This is retained by an M2 screw and a little retaining lip alongside the piece of titanium to stop it from rotating. To keep weight down, I plan to print the forks in polypropylene, same as the chassis for this robot. The second problem with the forks is their height. The original set of forks made it possible for the disc to contact a robot perpendicular to the floor. This would mean that rather than the forces being transmitted into the ground and keeping the robot still, it would throw my robot backwards and the other robot forwards. By adjusting the height of the forks and therefore changing the contact angle that a robot would make with the disc, it means the opponent can be thrown into the air and the forces push my robot down and into the floor, keeping it still. With the new forks printed and the titanium plates attached, I was pretty pleased with their ability to get under standard TPU forks. And with those small modifications, we should be ready for AWS. Before we get into the tournament, there's time for a little bit of housekeeping now. So previously, AWS had been run as a double elimination tournament. However, this time, it was running the Fight Night format for the first time. I was running three of my own robots at this tournament and helping someone else pit for one of theirs. I'll cover some of the robots you haven't seen so far in a future video, but for now, let's focus on Ferris. Ferris's first opponent is a pretty vicious hammersaw called Thwack Attack. It's an overhead attack robot, which isn't a great matchup for such an unwieldy disc, but it should be a fun fight nonetheless. Let's see how it went. Tears, we are both ready. I think we're more ready now than we were. Let's get this fight started. Two minutes on the clock. Ferris wheel spins up, that comically large spinner. Oh, the Oh, Thwack Attack gets a good hit in there. Has he hit the... Oh, we just missed it on the other camera. Nope, ignore that. <laughs> That's me pressing all the buttons here. Thwack Attack is going to try and go for that hit. Oh, that's some serious airtime. That's Ferris Wheel. Like to see. Nice and stable considering that gigantic blade, but still hasn't quite made the impact on Thwack Attack. It, it is pulling gyro for it. Like the, the, yeah, oh, oh whoa. spinning so fast. That's what we love to see. Ferris Wheel getting some more hits in there. Will Thwack Attack go for it? I oh, think he's gonna go for, for it, and he just hit the oh. disc. Ferris Wheel, got it. Oh, didn't quite capitalize on that upturned robot there. Uh, it looks like that's a tap out from Ferris Wheel. So your winner is Thwack Attack. So unfortunately, that was another loss, but it was so much more controllable than it had been at Orcs. The forks really transformed the robot, and I was actually able to drive it around, and it was really stable. Now the mode of failure was uh, a little embarrassing, uh, one of the switch connections had actually come unsoldered as it was tumbling around, so it was a quick fix, resoldered it, put it back together and then we were back in the box for the next fight. My opponent for this one is a brilliant little cluster bot called Stuff and Gubbins. This is usually quite a fun fight and I've fought them a couple of times in the past and to be honest I was quite looking forward to this with the big disc on there, let's see what happened. <laughs> Two minutes on the clock. Who's going into the roof first? Gubbins is get underneath, but stuff up against the wall there. The Clusterbots surprisingly taking control of this fight so far, but landing on top of uh, stuff there. Oh, bits flying over the pink one. And a bit more. That's a wheel gun. I think that's a wheel and a bit of motor actually looking at it. Now we've got half of a cluster. If our arena marshal decides that they're going to count down half of one of the clusters, they're more than within their right to do so. It's still moving. Oh, Gubbins is gone. Just got a one-wheeled cluster bot now. There we go. That is a win for Ferris Wheel. Brilliant, so that was a win, and even though it didn't go as I expected, as Verts don't usually win by pushing their opponents out, it still went pretty well. The robot was very drivable, and interestingly, though the cluster didn't get the airtime I was hoping for, the disc actually tore through the opponents instead, removing a gearbox complete with wheel attached. Next up is Frogger Money, and usually this would be considered quite a large vertical spinner. However, Ferris was designed to purposefully outreach designs like this, so going into this one I was pretty confident. Three, two, one, and activate. Sorry, because there's such a delay there. Oh, massive impact there from both robots. 
They, they've recovered. They're coming back together again. Oh, and that is the entire spinner ripped off from Frogger Money. But he's still got a good wedge game, and he's pushing Ferris Wheel around. He's got him over. Back onto his wheels again. Can he deliver another big hit? More so than uh, Frogger Money can. <laughs> Little pop there from uh, Ferris Wheel in delight. So that is a win for Ferris Wheel. Excellent. So it's doing exactly what I designed it to do. I'm really pleased with that. Ferris's long reach allowed me to clip the prop mount that supports the far side of the weapon blade and in one hit remove all the screws that held it there and rip the weapon blade out. Next up is the final fight of the Fight Night qualifiers. I'm fighting the robot called Roadworks Ahead. This is a very low wedge robot, so it's going to be quite difficult to get purchase on it. Hopefully I can get around to the side and not get pushed around by it too much. <laughs> Two minutes on the clock. <laughs> Defiantly flipping in the face there of uh, Ferris Wheel. You might regret that if he gets eaten off. But that's a good push there from uh, road, road Work Ahead. Stuck there against the... Oh, oh my god! And that was a massive hit there from Road Work Ahead. It's now hopping mad. But it can't self-ride. But it is there from another help with Ferris Wheel. And it's coming back on the attack. No fear from Harry. Fair play to him. Although he's now upside down and is struggling to self right. However, Ferris Wheel is also on its back. Ah, Ferris. Now, good flip there from uh, Roadwork Ahead. It's still going on the push, despite all the damage on the front there. The aggressiveness still on the road, Roadwork Ahead. There goes another chunk of tarmac off the front. And <laughs> into the pit, followed by Ferris Wheel. So with that fight, that closes out the qualification rounds for Ferris Wheel. So far for AWS, things have gone really well. I'd qualified one robot for the finals, and both Ferris and another robot, Elevron, were into the playoffs to get into the finals. Unfortunately, this left me with a difficult decision to make. I could only actually take one robot into the playoffs, and I had to ditch Ferris at this point. The reasons for this are a little bit boring and a little bit practical, but Ferris eats through batteries very quickly, it made much more sense to take a control bot in that's a bit more frugal with batteries. With that said, I was really happy with how Ferris will performed. It had gone from losing 4 out of the 5 fights at Orcs to winning 3 out of the 4 fights at AWS, a massive improvement for some small tweaks to the forks and the chassis. I have a few more upgrades and tweaks planned for Ferris, and if you'd like to see how my other robots got on in this tournament, please let me know in the comments down below. Special thanks to Dave from Team Hell, who ran Ox, and to Matt from Team Croc, who ran AWS. I'd also like to say thank you to Harry from Team Panoramic for letting me use some of his Ox footage, and also to Mohit for getting some of the slow motion shots you've seen today. Thanks for watching.